Hi folks, Sacto Dan here. This excerpt from 2020 on October 17th talks about what caused the mortgage meltdown and whether or not government is the solution. In the past few weeks, our government has taken big steps to do what they say they have to do to rescue the economy. They put more than two trillion of your dollars on the line. What's that gonna do to your life? Our entire economy is in danger. Politicians and pundits say it's the worst financial crisis in decades. Fear taking hold of the financial markets today. The cause, say the presidential candidates, greed and lack of regulation. They said they wanted to let the market run free, but instead they let it run wild. Democrats say it's the administration's fault. Deregulation and failure to regulate is, has been one of our major problems. That was the Bush view. Don't regulate anybody. Bush removed all the regulations and let these people run wild. That claim is absolutely false. Jonathan Macy teaches corporate law and finance at Yale. People can blame George Bush with doing a lot of things, but deregulating is not one of those. There was no real deregulation during the Bush years. It's a side of the story that you may not have heard. Many experts say that today's problems were caused by too much government meddling, not too little. Historically, responsible home buyers and shrewd banks bargained until they found common ground. Home buyers wanted the best rates possible. Banks wanted their money back. But that equilibrium was disrupted when politicians decided that government should try to make the dream of home ownership more achievable. Our government is supporting home ownership. Congress told big government-sponsored companies like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, buy up more home loans. Politicians had this goal of being able to wave about the claim that home ownership rates are at an all-time high. Seems like a lovely idea. Unfortunately, it was based on people who couldn't afford to pay those loans back once housing prices started to fall. Economists Russ Roberts and Walter Williams say government was essentially insisting the skaters at the rink go too fast. They encouraged banks and other lending institutions to make loans to people that the banks and lending institutions themselves would not have done. They would not have taken on that level of risk. They would have said, give me a down payment. Uh, that's I want to check your credit. That is absolutely right. You know, 20% down. We're going to check your, your credit. There's not going to be any liar loans or no doc loans. All these things happen at the insistence of Congress. Home ownership is very important. Congressman Elijah Cummings says government should encourage home ownership. Government was saying loan more to people with no credit. Their government went beyond where government should have gone. That candor's refreshing. Until recently, politicians were cheerleading for Fannie and Freddie. These are sound. These institutions are in sound shape. Things are good in the housing market. I think we see entities that are fundamentally sound financially. Now that the music stopped and the bubbles burst. Mortgage foreclosures reach an all-time high. Are the politicians saying, sorry, we made a mistake? No. Now they tell us government must do more. The federal government must implement a program. That's very much like you see a building on fire. Would you call the arsonist who created it to help you put it out? No, you wouldn't. But we're calling on Congress that created the problem to help us solve it. Congress passed a bailout bill to buy up those toxic assets and prop up shaky banks. Did that help? Stocks dropped 800 points today before. Apparently not. These people are saying, we've got to fix it. Give us the authority. And look what's happening. It's getting worse, not better. It's just a panicked overreaction. Without a rescue, we were told, America will spiral into another Great Depression. If government doesn't act, says Congressman Cummings, his constituents in Maryland won't be able to get credit to buy homes and cars. I have a duty to try to protect those people. Taking billions from taxpayers and giving it to these banks that made stupid decisions is going to help those people? We've got to stop the bleeding. But wait a minute. Actually, I can have an approval decision for you in just a few minutes. We hear that credit's locked up, things frozen, but you can go out now and get a loan for a house if your credit's good. Refinance with lending tree. Are you sure it's right for the government to do something? Maybe the government should do nothing. What a Let problem the market is, we can't afford to continue to do nothing. But bailouts just encourage more reckless lending and will prolong the crisis, say Roberts and Williams. The problem is when you start saying, Nobody can make a bad decision. We'll always take care of you. They say these companies are too big to fail. No company is too big to fail. Business failure is just as 
critical to a market system as business success. It tells people that you're doing the wrong thing. There would still be pain, they say, job loss, credit problems, but maybe it would be smarter to take our lumps now and get it over with. We created a housing bubble and it's time for the bubble to break. That's creating spontaneous order. That's getting back to the normal state of affairs. Let the bubble pop, they say. Then we can start again.